Shalom, here we are with chapter 11 of Mounts' Basics of Biblical Greek Workbook. It's the fourth edition we're looking at, and I'm uh, doing some homework prep here where we look at the the first examples from each of the uh, sections of the workbook, the parsing, the warm-up, and the translation. So here we are. Uh, It's not the greatest uh, picture, but this is from the workbook. And in our parsing section here, we see our first our first challenge here is the word sigma omicron yoda see that soy sounds like soybean right soy Uh, and we have to figure out what that is well if we remember that that yod functions in in the pronouns like a third declension the dative does and so it's a uh, the yoda that we would expect as the ending of a dative, but it it stays like a third declension at the end of the word without subscripting. So the case of this is dative. It's the dative. And the number is singular. So remember, chapter 11 is about first and second person pronouns. The gender Ah, this is a tricky question. It's actually not applicable because in the first and second person in Greek, there is no gender encoded in the pronouns. Now there is in the third declension, autos, aute, for example, he, she. But in first person, if I say I or we, or second person, if I say you, singular or y'all, there's no encoding of gender you'd have to look elsewhere because these are pronouns you'd have to find from context the antecedent for the pronoun and you could maybe determine gender that way the lexical form here for soy do you know what it is it's su sigma upsilon su and it, it just means you in the nominative case su so it's a second person nominative and it's singular. Um, and the inflected meaning then of soy is two or four you. There you go. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be two or four you. It could, for example, if you had N soy, right? Where you because N is a preposition that takes a dative. So if you had in soy, that could mean in you. Like for example, the promise in you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. So there's other prepositions that could go with the word you to capture this, but two and four is a good uh, go-to uh, for capturing the dative. And just remember, we're just wanting to remember that the dative is to be differentiated from the nominative, from the genitive, from the accusative. Let's do another one here. We'll do another one. Number two, humin. Humin. Well, if you remember the the second person plural pronouns, uh, they look identical except for that initial vowel. Um, I'll just draw them up here. For example, hey mean, there's a hey mean and there's a who mean. Those are two different words. Well, what, what's the difference? Hey mean is, uh, is first person. Who mean is second person. And I, I remember that with the mnemonic of who rhyming with you. <laughs> That's a way to, to maybe uh, remember it for yourself as well. But let's go back now and we'll look. Who mean? Certainly, if we remember our endings, the, the, the new ending is also like number one, dative. But this one is plural. Again, in first and second uh, person pronouns, there's no gender encoded, so just not applicable. Now the lexical form, it's not plural for su, so it's not the same as above. It is humace, like this. Humace, which means y'all in the nominative plural. Humace. 
And then, so if it's dative, uh, what does it mean? It's two or four, you, you all. You kind of have to fudge it in English to capture that it's a plural. There you go. So just a reminder then also. So, so um, if I said, hey, Mace, like this, that's we in the nominative. So it's first person. But if I say who mace, the, the word is the same, except I, it, they both have a rough breathing, but it starts with an oops on who mace, uh, that equals you plural in the nominative. Hey mace versus who mace. Okay, so there's a little bit of warm up with our parsing. Let's zoom back out. Let's look at uh, uh, warm up. Now we're technically going to the warm up section. I know that uh, my picture of the page here isn't uh, super clear, but uh, here we go. Warm up number alpha. Uh, eninka. Remember when we have a gamma and a kappa together, we call it. We we say that there's a nasalization of that gamma. It becomes an n sound. So eninka. Eninka means I have brought. Eninka tonhuyonmu. So what is tonhuyonmu? Do you remember what huyas? Huyas is sun. So what is tonhuyon? That's the accusative, right? So huyas, that is just a second declension masculine noun. So huyas, huyu, huyo, and then huyan for our accusative singular with the definite article. So we have ton huyon the sun, but we also have a genitive here from our chapter 11 lessons of uh, pronouns, mu. That's a uh, genitive meaning mine, my. So mu is my, right? It's the genitive of, if I were to look that up, it would be ego, right? I, what's the genitive? Mu is of me, right? Moi, to or for me, right? And then me me as the direct object. But here we have this one here, mu, which is that genitive. So it means my. So I brought, is uh, eninka, my son. I brought my son, so literally the son of me. But in English, we don't talk that way. The son of me, we say my son. So I'm gonna just take that whole phrase and say my son. Then we have pros se, pros se. So pros is a preposition that takes, do you remember what uh, case it takes? It takes an accusative and means before, like uh, spatially before. And notice we have se. Well, se is just like we saw in our uh, parsing, except we saw soy, which is the dative. Se is the accusative, the accusative singular of the second person. So we just did, um, let me erase all this. We did ego. Let's do um, su. Oops. So this is first person. Here, let's do second person right below. Make sure that's on the screen here for you. So it's going to be su. Then su again, but this is su genitive of you, soy, that's our dative, to or for you, and then se, you, singular, as a direct object, pros se, then must be before you. Eninka ton huyon mu pros se, I brought my son before you. Okay, let's do another one. We've got mu going on here, meaning mine. Let's just look at uh, number beta here. I'll zoom in. Hakuriosmu kai ha teosmu. Hakuriosmu kai ha teosmu. The Lord of me kai ha teosmu and the God of me. That's pretty easy. My Lord and my God. 
my master and my God. Pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. Now this page, this page is pretty blurry. I apologize here. I'm going to zoom out a little. Maybe we can get the whole thing on the screen. Yeah, I didn't uh, do a very good uh, image of that. Here, I think I get the whole thing right there. So, yeah, it's hard to look at. Um, ego e baptisa. Ego e baptisa. Uh, now, e baptisa is I baptized, but ego now is emphatic. I baptized humas. Humas. There we go. There's our chapter 11 pronoun. This is from humes. So humes is the nominative. Uh, and here we got humas, the accusative plural of the second person pronoun. Y'all as a direct object. So, uh, a baptisa humas. I baptized y'all. Hudati. There's a, a good third declension noun. Hudor, which is water. Hudor. Um, in the dative singular, udati. Remember that Yoda there is our good old friend that in the first and second declensions subscripts, but here it doesn't. Udati, third declension, dative singular, the Yoda does not subscript. So that's why we see it there. So, ego e baptisa humas udati. I baptized you in water or with water. Notice here a dative without any preposition. Udati. It just means by means of water, with water. Autos de. But he. Autos. So now autos is our third person nominative singular. And it's masculine. So it means he. But he. We know it's the subject because it's in the nominative case. So we say he in English. But he baptise. Now we haven't done verbs yet in mounts, but a baptisa and baptise, they look a lot alike. They sound a lot alike. They come from the same verb baptizo, I baptize. But the first one here, a baptisa, is what we call an aorist. So it's a completed action. Whereas baptise is talking about the future. He will baptize. Notice the baptisa has a little thing we call an augment, and we'll learn that when we do verbs, uh, which is a flag of past tense, of past time. A baptisa, I baptized, baptise, he will baptize. Uh, and then it says humas. So again, we have the same object, humas. It's the accusative plural of the second person pronoun. So a baptisa, uh, a baptisa humas, I baptized y'all, says John. Uh, autos de, but he uh, baptise humas, he will baptize y'all. And then we have N, pneumati hagio, pneumati hagio, in the Holy Spirit. Pretty awesome passage here. Uh, and so there you go. So, um, we have two sentences put together. So there's a compound sentence. This is, uh, this can stand on its own right here. Um, ego e baptisa humas udati. As a matter of fact, you could reduce the sentence just to the verb. E baptisa, I baptized. That's, that's totally fine. You could then just include the object. E baptisa humas. I baptized you all. That's a complete coherent sentence. Uh, and then we just have the modifier or the, uh, something that is clarifying the nature of the baptism, hudati, by water. And then we have the ego, uh, which is highlighting the first person. Uh, even though a baptisa by itself contains the, the pronoun I, uh, it's encoded. So person is encoded in the Greek verb. But ego then has to be explained as some sort of uh, highlight. And, of course, the, the contrast is between ego, the first person singular a pronoun used by John, and autos, the third person uh, singular pronoun used uh, for Yeshua. So both are important. John's important. Yeshua's important. But this is one of the statements whereby John really magnifies uh, and clarifies the difference. Uh, another passage would be where John says, you know, I'm not even worthy to loose the, the sandal 
uh, of his foot. So uh, John is indeed important and he was uh, obedient to what he was called to do. But he had a fixed uh, role, he had a lane to stay in, and um, Yeshua had a completely uh, revolutionary role to play. Um, and of course, they had a relationship together. So uh, here again, with our pronouns, which is the core of chapter 11, ego in the nominative, humas in the accusative plural, autos, which is third person singular in the nominative, and then humas again, the second person uh, pronoun in the accusative plural. All right, hang in there, practice your Greek, and enjoy translating these passages of Scripture. Shalom.